Right. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to just launch a screen share so we have the agenda in front of us. And I'd like to welcome everybody to this meeting. Uh, the agenda has been posted and, uh, and circulated. I have received apologies from Erwin de Vries, who's busy transiting between uh, Kamloops and Vancouver. Uh, but he, he has requested uh, that we record the meeting and he will catch up uh, once, once he gets uh, to his destination. So without, I, uh, I, I think the key purposes of this meeting are to meet the creative team who are assisting us on this project. And I do want to acknowledge the support we have received from the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, which is one of our major donors who has given us a capacity development grant, which has enabled this work to, uh, to progress and uh, commission professional help and support in moving this forward. Uh, I, have, I have to concede that marketing is not one of my strengths. Uh, so we're very pleased uh, to be able to have uh, uh, professionals helping us with this task. Um, I want us to have a quick look at the marketing plan that is on the table in part uh, that is directed by the requirements of the funder. Uh, but I, I do think it is a robust and solid plan in terms of moving forward. Uh, to have a, uh, and, and Helen, you'll be able to guide us here on, you know, the development process, particularly with regards to the video and, you know, at which point you would like to have feedback uh, and the like. Uh, we can consider uh, and have a look at some of the feedback that's been coming in, but perhaps you won't be able to go into all the detail of all the feedback, you know, given time constraints but it'll be good to see that we are getting feedback coming in. And I also just want to highlight some of the tools we are using to support the project management and development process uh, you know, for this marketing communication and fund development project. So um, are, there, are there any other uh, purposes or aims that you feel we should be uh, covering in this meeting? And then if not, I will move, uh, move on then to introductions. No. Right, and, and for those that are new to the OERU process, uh, our practice is silence means assent. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, that's the cue for me to move on to the next item on the agenda, uh, which is item number one there, uh, introducing the creative team in no specific order. Uh, I just you know, j uh, jotted these down and I'll, I'll go according to the order that I've got listed here. So Helen, the floor is yours. Well, hi everybody, lovely to meet you. Um, so I'm Helen Baxter from Moment Media. I'm one of the directors and the main writer on the project. So, uh, and also working at how this is going to interface as a communications tools for your marketing objectives. Also in the room today, I've got Dan with me, who is our illustrator and animator. So he is going to be turning the, uh, the communications challenge into doodles and then helping make them move. So uh, it's really good to bring him in at this early stage um, to get your feedback in terms of you know, what messages we're trying to get across and then work out the most fun way and engaging way of doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, welcome. welcome both Helen and, and Dan. Looks like we've got a hostile takeover bid from Wellington. Uh, <laughs> both uh, Dan and uh, Helen are located in Wellington. Uh, so they're moving on then uh, across the Pacific uh, to uh, Vancouver Island, I believe, right? Um, uh, Jason Finnerty. Hi all, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Jason Finnerty. I'm uh, the, the everything at uh, Brandscape and Marketing. Um, I'm thrilled to be here. It's a, it's a great team. I'm really enjoying the process and uh, all the tools. Uh, an amazing amount of communication so far. So it's, uh, it's been pretty awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Jason. And uh, we're really chuffed to have you on board. Uh, you come highly recommended from uh, BC Campus, which is uh, one of our founding anchor partners. So it's, you know, it's great to have that connection as well. Um, moving on then, I just, uh, in terms of background, we recently at the recent uh, OERU management committee meeting, we amalgamated the partner engagement group and the marketing group uh, to form one group, uh, to form one working group. Uh, the OERU is structured according to working groups, but I, I think this is really helping us sharpen the focus and avoid duplication. Uh, so uh, with that, I'd like to hand over to David Porter 
uh, who's actually uh, fulfilling two roles here. One is his role in the working group as one of the conveners and a uh, member of the board. So David, um, I'm not sure if everybody knows you, but uh, at least for the recording, it will be good to have you introduce yourself. Hi, it's David Porter. I'm a member of the board and uh, currently Associate Vice President Education at the British Columbia Institute of Technology in Vancouver. So uh, pleased to be here. Know most of the uh, other participants, including uh, Jason and Jim and Wayne. Hi, David. Glad you could make it, and I really appreciate that you know the time you're giving to the OERU. Uh, it's 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 a great help. And then uh, let me hand over to uh, Jim Taylor. Uh, who is one of the strategic thought leaders uh, behind the, uh, the OERU. Thanks, Wayne. Um, my current uh, position is Emeritus Professor at the University of Southern Queensland, where I was formerly the Deputy Vice Chancellor for Global Learning Services and Chief Information Officer. So I'm sort of semi-retired and uh, Having been involved with the OERU since the outset, I'm keen to continue to see it come to fruition. And uh, as part of that role, I'm also a member of the OER Foundation Board and uh, keeps me out of mis mischief. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, uh, thank, thanks, Jim. And uh, you keep us on our toes. Um, that, you know, it's a great contribution and you know, moving this project forward. And let me hand over to my partner in open crime, uh, Dave in Christchurch. Dave, uh, are, are you getting the audio feed? Mm, for some reason, it looks like Dave is hanging. Let me just quickly check here. Uh, yeah, for some other reason, Dave's mic is not enabled. Let me just send him a chat message. Uh, we'll see if we get that sorted. All right, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back. Um, uh, to Dave to introduce himself for some other reason his mic doesn't seem to be enabled uh, but let's move on with the agenda and when when Dave gets his uh, mic sorted uh, I'll, I'll let him introduce himself so so this at this point uh, Jason I don't want to put you on the spot uh, but I, 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 I thought it would be a good uh, a good idea for us to have a look at the overall marketing plan uh, because everything else actually slots into that high-level marketing plan and what I'll do is I'll just, uh, for your benefit, also just uh, open that up on the screen share. And um, if you could just give us a high-level overview of you know what we're planning to do. Sure. Um, really, uh, the goal is, is sort of content creation and lead generation to drive engagement. Um, really creating awareness of, about the brand, but also providing good information for the partners, for the donors, and for the students as to why OERU is um, the, the way of the future, to use an 80s term, um, but the, the right tool for um, the knowledge acquisition. Um, we want to create materials that, uh, that stimulate some interest, um, have an actionable message that facilitates further conversation and really put a spotlight on OERU. Yeah. Thanks for that, Jason. And um, and the and the various components within the plan. One, you know, doing uh, a bunch of updates to the, the OERU website um, and and improving copy on the OERU website. Also, the work that we've done with the development of the open business models, we would like that to be presented uh, professionally. How, how best to integrate that is you know, still open to discussion. Um, the thinking is that we're going to, and this is where Helen's work uh, 
uh, and uh, Mohawk Media coming to the play. We are going to be producing two whiteboard style animated videos, one for students and one for learners. We'll come to that in a moment. But really, uh, the call to action would, for example, be you know, to go and look at the online brochure, which uh, Jason's going to be helping us uh, with. Um, there's, there's a plan around you know, the, the drip feeding for, is, is that the correct terminology? You see, I'm not a marketer, Jason. Okay, yeah, so the, uh, yeah, and the email campaign and some content generation around uh, promoting uh, uh, in, uh, you know, engagement with the OERU. The second phase, which you will need to be taking a decision here, is to actually see how, you know, to have a small spend around helping us move forward with the uh, student recruitment piece, uh, particularly with our uh, OERU first year of study. And at this stage, we've got, you know, two options which you might consider, uh, but within, say, the next fortnight or three or next three weeks or so, we, we'll take a decision as to the best way to move forward there. So, in, uh, in terms of uh, the summary of the plan, are there any questions from the floor? Um, Jim and I just had a conversation uh, about an hour ago, and, and he brought up a great um, component that we haven't put in there yet, but um, it sort of builds on the, the online brochure, but having a, a resource available so that when everybody's at the conferences that they're able to uh, have something that will share with the, the different segments and, and make it a whole lot easier to have a unified front um, and, and really push yep. within those groups. Uh, a, a explanation that really sort of worked well for me was you know, the vice chancellors are, are definitely more academically inclined, whereas the um, presidents may be more uh, differently motivated. So yep. um, I think that's something that we really want to include in there. Yeah, just a brief comment on that, Wayne, if I may. Um, sure. I think we all agree from the comments that we've got two distinct target audiences, and I felt that the uh, pathway of reaching senior managers in higher education, including the presidents and vice chancellors, would be useful to have a conference presentation package where we had a, a few slides that were common. Um, possibly a poster that could be used at conferences and embedding the, the sort of mohawk animations and so on into that. But I think a few professional slides putting the big picture together uh, would mean that we could have a coordinated network of professional engagement at academic conferences yeah. and uh, that that should help. Thanks. Yeah. All right, Jim, I think that's an, an excellent idea. Um, and uh, again, the whole philosophy of, you know, reusing our artifacts that we produce in different contexts. And so that will have implications in terms of how we put this together. Um, also, uh, it, it might, in this, day, in this digital age, it might seem odd to be using print resources like, you know, posters and that sort of thing. But even for learners, uh, you know, having a generic poster, you know, that's in an SVG format that, you know, is scalable and can be posted up at our different institutions, you know, for learners wanting to, to register is extremely powerful. I, I've used it quite extensively with, you know, prototype courses that we've run. We, we just give a, you know, a, a, a you know, PDF poster available in different sizes, which the community actually just go and download in the local community centers. So it's actually quite an effective way of getting, getting the word out. So I'm, I'm pleased that we can uh, figure out how we can incorporate those ideas. Yeah, thanks for that, Jim. Um, in, any other questions at, from the floor? Again, I'll take silence to mean assent. There we go. David, looks like you've got your mic sorted, so you might want to just introduce yourself quickly. Yeah. Hello, all. Sorry, I've, I had a few computer issues here, which kept me uh, from joining as I'd intended. Um, but uh, yeah, so my, my involvement is just uh, one of the uh, technical people with the um, Open Education Resource Foundation, and uh, I'm more or less coming at this from um, the perspective of a technologist, I suppose, but also someone who's run a biz small business and uh, done a fair bit of marketing as a result of that. So I'm keen to, to have some involvement in, in the um, 
uh, excited about the prospect of uh, having some very nice um, digital assets that we can that we can uh, propagate out there and help to get the message out. Yeah. And, and, and not to mention extensive experience on the CMS side of things uh, and, of course, running open source technologies. So uh, it's you know, great to uh, have you here with the team, Dave. Right. Uh, moving on then, um, Jason has uh, created a, a very initial draft uh, attempt at an elevator pitch and, and really, you know, we, we're posting it as, as an... Uh, as you know, in in the wiki to to get feedback and as you know to kick off this iterative process of refining you know the elevator pitch and and to be fair uh, to Jason and the others, the OERU concept is is quite complex. It's kind of, you know it's, it's very unique. It's not traditional, and so you know we're going to have to think very very carefully about you know how we position the OERU and the elevator pitch to conservative academics who are not familiar with the open model. Uh, and that of itself is going to be an interesting challenge. We've posted a copy of the elevator pitch in the wiki. And Jason, thanks for sharing this in the wiki. Looks like we've got the wrong link there. There we go. Um, and I also just sent out a note to the marketing list this morning that uh, you know this is there, and we're inviting feedback. Jason. Um, do you have uh, any guidance or suggestions or the kind of feedback you're looking for and, and uh, how, how we want to progress from here? Um, well, right now, yeah, just the, the more input, the better. Uh, what, what you provided already has been really good. I'm hesitant about doing two separate um, pitches because that's just going to lead to confusion. Um, and for consistency across the board, I, I think one unified message we can fork it a little bit and, and have sort of um you know, two different parts of it but it, it needs to come around it and be uh, um, consistent and uh, understandable um so the the academic crowd is going to appreciate it but also the students and that's going to be the tricky part but i think we can get there yeah, th thanks for that, David. What uh, what Jason's referring to, we've uh, already had some feedback on the discussion page in the wiki. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with Media Wiki, each page in the wiki has a corresponding discussion page, and there has been some initial feedback on the the draft that has been posted. Uh, you will see as I'm waiting for this to load. Uh, the threads will load now. Uh, there's an area for general suggestions, and I posted a comment, you know, given that we're working with distinct audiences, I wasn't sure whether we needed two pitches or not, and Jason uh, has ad advised from uh, being a marketing professional, said, no, that's not what we need. Uh, and, you know, I, 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 I take your advice on that, Jason. Thanks for that. And, um, you know, some initial feedback on the elevated pitch. So I'm just pointing this out here, and I would encourage particularly all members of the marketing uh, communications, a partner engagement group, you know, to provide feedback. We'll also be shoulder tapping a couple of folk in the network. So I, we only posted this a couple of hours uh, before the meeting. So um, I don't, uh, I, I don't think everyone has had a chance to actually look at this yet and you know give consistent feedback or you know give uh, uh, feedback. So um, at this point, any questions? Um, or thoughts uh, relating to the elevator pitch and the process. I like planners speak, David Porter. Um, I think that as soon as we start using academic terminology, um, you get into repel mode rather than attract mode. And, and I think we need to be careful about that. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that, David, Jim here. And um, one of the things that uh, I talked to Jason about earlier today was if we could feel comfortable about focusing on the concrete manifestation of what we're trying to do rather than a, a more abstract academic description. Uh, and I was wondering to what extent we'd feel confident to get the MVP project in terms of the operational manifestation of what we do is that we offer these courses, you know, for these awards with um, 
in effect, the focus on paying for assessment only and affordable access. Uh, it becomes easier possibly to sell a concrete operation than it does to sell a, an abstract concept. Yeah. Yes, uh, I, I, concur, I concur with both comments. Um, I, I think we need to avoid ac academic lingua, particularly in the elevator pitch and you know, focusing on the practice of the OERU, uh, I think is the way to go uh, with this. Um, we can touch on some of the academic related stuff in the brochure. Um, because, and it's really you know, getting people to the point of actually reading that brochure. Um, and, and, you know, sort of addressing the more conservative sort of vice chancellor type of individual. And I think we've got, you know, other uh, avenues to communicate that uh, effectively. So, yeah, I, that makes good sense to me. Any other uh, comments, feedback, rebuttals? Again, I'll take silence to mean assent. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, no, I think we're off to a good start here. Um, Jason, I'm not sure if you, you noticed that uh, this is in uh, relation to the video work that we've been doing. We've been asking people to provide sound bites, which is kind of sort of an amateur way of trying to get uh, you know, in information in uh, that might uh, lead into the work that you're doing on the, the um, elevator pitch. So that might be you know, worth a read because uh, I think there are, uh, there, there's some good content there. And, um, it was a post that Dave referred to uh, in the feedback. Okay, so moving on then, uh, Helen, I'm going to hand the floor to you uh, so you can you know, give us an overview of the video design uh, project uh, and you know, the, the initial work that, we, the, that we've started on. So Helen, uh, the, the floor is yours. Thanks, okay, great. So. Well, I thought I'd quickly run through. So just picking up that previous point about language and terminology, I completely agree that trying to keep accessible, non-academic, pyramidal, in the, you know, wet enough interests at the top to try and draw people in, and then you can expand. So good thinking. And also needing to make sure that any keywords and terms um, in the elevator pitch are reinforced in the video materials. So in terms of the process, uh, the stage that we're at the moment is initial draft uh, scripts. So we've just, I've put together um, just a simple quick run at a potential framework for both videos. So the other thing we're currently looking at is scenes that we can, that commonalities between the two and then the point at which they fork to give different uh, perspectives for the different audiences. One of the other things that uh, Wayne mentioned at the very beginning in the brief, which we're also thinking into, is any scenes that could be potentially pulled out as standalone, potentially rebrandable, uh, reworkable for future um, reuse of the project. Because I'm thinking very much in the same way about creating jigsaw pieces that can be repurposed. So again, going back to the point earlier as well about the work of brochures, for example, one of the things that we will also be able to provide ongoing is once we have locked off some of the design ideas and some of the graphics, we will then be able to create a graphics pack from the video that you can then bring in to potentially use in the brochure. So a little bit further down the line, we can start to identify what those elements are, and then obviously I'm very happy to talk to the partners in the, who are going to be moving it forward. Moving from video to print is also something we're doing a lot more of. Um, the idea of remixing and repurposing for multi-channel publishing opportunities. So again, when we're deeper into the project, we can have a look and see whether or not there's, there's parts of what we're doing that are reusable. So in terms of process, at this stage, Initially, we've put together a draft script. Dan and I have had a few creative meetings to come up with a few ideas about what potentially we might be seeing at key points in the, in the story. Um, so we've got, at the, this stage, we've got an initial draft script which has been shared on the wiki. I've done a little bit more tinkering on this to um, go onto the bonnet a bit more based on the barriers and the feedback that have come in. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. And I can just quickly run through the, the key points which I think are uh, the, the most important ones to cover. Because I've been thinking, with this part of this process, I've been putting two very different hats in. One, a learner. So that one is a lot easier, I think, and needs to be 
short, succinct. The purpose is we want people to watch, we create desire to know more and show them the very clear pathway of how to sign up. So that one's relatively straightforward. The one for the institutions, I think, will need a little bit more time to really drill down to what those uh, drivers are for the decision makers. Again, I've had a little bit of a think into that. So I think today, if I talk through my thinking process, see if you agree with me. Um, and then to follow, what we would be doing is putting together a very, very rough animatic based on guide vocals, which are usually at this stage mine as I do do a bit of uh, some voice work anyway, so it's usually easier just to get a very rough idea of timings, shape, structure, any gaps, and basically just to see where everything fits together. So uh, basically what we will be able to put together to follow in this is a, an animatic which we'll be able to share with you that has uh, basically um, will be a, a shareable link that we can send to you which you'll be able to watch through and then add your markups onto screen. So that's our intention is that at some point this week, if not to follow today, because I really want to hear what, what uh, people's thoughts are based on the barriers and the reasons for signing up uh, for the institutions. And I think that's, that's today is probably the most useful thing if we look at that side of things. And then what we will be putting together with very, very rough sketches at this point um, is a very rough edit, animatic format, which you'll be able to watch through and then be able to add comments on, uh, which we will then see coming in. And it's an iterative process. From this point. So uh, any questions at that stage in terms of the production process? No, that's good. Okay, so on those sort of usually... Uh, <laughs> Um, so there's plenty of opportunity for people to give ideas and input, uh, and we, you know, we'll make sure that the storyboards and the other matters we've got to sign off before we go into final production of those. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Helen. I have to say your creative energy is contagious. Um, <laughs> um, you know, those of us that work in conservative ac academic environments, uh, you know, uh, don't often see that. So. Um, <laughs> It's, it's really quite refreshing, and I suspect that one or two folk might not have had a chance to point the question because <laughs> we're moving on to the, the next section. But I do want to pick up on one of the points, which I think is quite important. Being openly licensed uh, content, and I mean, this is one of the reasons I was keen to work with Mohawk Media, because you, as, a, as a company, you have no objections to working with openly licensed uh, materials and you know, open source formats, so, um, and that's a great plus to us which then creates opportunities for remix, but more importantly for our partner institutions to actually uh, bring in their own brands uh, you know, in, in, into this, this marketing. I mean, the thinking is if we can get ownership from our partner networks and actually using the re reusing and remixing the materials for their own purposes, I, th I think we're on a winning path. And uh, you know, we'll need to see how that goes. So at this point, let, let me open up the floor uh, to, if, if there are any questions from, from colleagues uh, in, in relation to the process and uh, the, what the thinking is at this stage before we move on to taking a look at those barriers and uh, the sound bites that we've got in the wiki. Just a quick comment, if I may. Um, I think, you know, what is OERU uh, is, a, is a fundamental issue for you know, both the brand scaling project and the media project. And I think trying to represent OERU as its partner. So we had this issue raised in the discussion about, you know, are we branding OERU? Are we branding our partners? And what is it? And um, I think having the link to the the strength of the network already is the fact that we've got 30 plus partners. And um, I'm not quite sure how we deal with that and how we uh, push OERU. And I think the point was made that the OERU is not awarding any credit, it's the partners. So I see that as a challenge and I'm not quite sure how we, we get to that. But I think that the one click link is the question I have is when we're conceiving this is we need to get to a point where you can open up the link to show the partners page. Similarly, 
are we in a position to open a link to show the courses link? Because a CVAN is a strength of what we're doing once you've got confirmed courses leading to Exit Awards, which is the David Corner Challenge. And um, how confident are we that we can use that in this um, advertising marketing work that we're doing? Yeah. That's a really good point, Jim, David. I mean, when I look at OERU, I, I look for a metaphor to compare it to, and it's kind of like Expedia. You know, like Expedia is an aggregator of uh, pathways to travel itineraries, but it doesn't own any cars, planes, or hotels. And, and in a sense, neither does the OERU. It is really an aggregator. It's a pathway, um, and it's, it's a way of bringing people to the market in a sense, if you were talking in a very kind of crass marketing sense. And uh, it's like a channel to market. So I, I think we need to get the wording right around that. I totally agree with what you're saying. It's not we who will award the credit, it is the institutions. And we, got, we have to find a way to position ourselves effectively in that context. Yeah. Uh, in relation to that, David, um, I think when you said Expedia, I was thinking, well, we've also got Wiki Educator. You know, the OERF Foundation is a sort of aggregator and facilitator. And I wonder to what extent we can you know, use that benefit. The other thought that I had that um, I talked to Jason about earlier was whether we can somehow uh, build on what Creative Commons has done. You know, what's the awareness in the market of the licensing or does that just make it all too complicated? So I see the issue is critical to get this um, succinct focus on the essence of what we do that can be um, communicated um, in a simple manner. Yeah, agreeing with all the above, uh, Wayne is uh, nodding his head in agreement. Um, and, and Jim, I think your point about the fact that we are a network is, is very significant. And it's, that is our point of difference in this space. I mean, all, all the commercial MOOC crowds, and e I mean, even though they've got partners, they, they actually don't function as a network. They're a learning platform, whereas the OERU is this network. And it is a very strong feature of what we're trying to do. So, I mean, I think we do need to think carefully about, you know, how, you know, how we communicate that. So, yeah. Any uh, other comments from the floor? Uh, Helen, was that you? Yeah, I was just going to sort of say, talk into that, that I completely agree with you because the opportunity that we have very much here with animated video is the, the, the multiple layers of what you can hear and what you can see. So in terms of what we can be displaying on screen, um, it gives us a lot of opportunity to show not as well as tell. So one of the hero scenes that we've been sketching out is this concept of a globe with pop-outs of institutions and logos um, showing this idea of an internet interconnected global network and the you know the connections in between the peer-to-peer -peer learning supports that again could be a similar scene in the students one um, and um, yeah so so these are all really good ideas and and also this idea of alternative pathways so again these are all things that I'm listening into that we can put in as visual metaphors throughout the, the story. So it's really good to hear what you consider to be the most important points to get across. The, the other thing that I'd emphasize again, the way I think of it is um, sort of process and product networks, a sort of process. And to what extent can we focus on a product at this stage of our development? And I come back to asking the question, if, if we had and Wayne would understand the complexities of saying we've got these awards at this stage, can we emphasize that we've got these products, these courses, can we emphasize that? Or do we have to design it in such a way that we have a, a one-click access to wherever we're at at that stage? So that, you know, want to know more about the courses, bang here, etc. Yeah. 
So, so, so Jim, I mean, uh, yeah, um, my, my thinking around this uh, sort of drifts off the cuff because I haven't really thought much about it. But I, I do agree. I think for the student video, uh, particularly, you know, we we're moving forward with the launch of MVP, we must try and focus as much as we can on product. Um, and by the notion is, uh, but let me put it this way, I know we're going to be particularly successful with this marketing campaign, given the professional expertise we've got around the table. And with the growth of the network and all these students will have money to commission a new video <laughs> when we need to have a, a new one made, uh, you know, to adjust the message. So, I mean, I think Jim's point is, is well made. You know, let's focus on a tangible product that takes a learner through a process. And uh, Helen, I can help navigate some of the uh, dynamics, so to speak, uh, because you'll appreciate with different institutions and different qualifications and all these sorts of things, we've got to be uh, careful in what we say and how we say it. But uh, we can certainly help you in focusing on a you know, clear product uh, that avoids in, you know, any political dynamic uh, that might arise. Uh, but I think we must try and focus on product, particularly for the MVP. Uh, I, I would far rather spend, you know, in other words, not trying to create a student video that's going to last us 10 years. Uh, but, you know, to focus on actually pushing our, our, our MVP product to market uh, in, in, in a sensible way. It's kind of my gut feel response at this stage. But to be fair, I haven't thought about it, uh, you, know, you know, too carefully. Jim, I, I don't know, does that make sense? Yeah, I think um, as we're in this iterative uh, process at the moment, we need to not crystallized too early until we get the fundamental structures of what we're doing uh, together. And that's why I think these meetings are important. That if we, for example, move away from looking at the animation and so on, which takes a you know, particular look through a telescope at one particular aspect of it, if we come back to the big picture, I think that the academic targets um, I'm more confident that we can reach partners uh, through the process of um, academic professional development and you know, interaction. So if we had a package that, um, as I said, went to conference presentations, and I know that's what several members do already, they become OERU advocates. And if we had a package for OERU advocates, um, we could build a network of um, focus on particular conferences and so on, getting this same strong, powerful message together that again embedded the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. So I think coming back to the landscaping plan, we need to um, also try and work um, in light of the big picture and relationships between strategies um, that we've uh, talked about. Yeah. Well, hey, it's David. Um, I've been down this path before at BC Campus where I didn't own any product, but I was part of the market, marketing conduit for it for 25 universities and colleges. Yeah. And we produced two two-minute animated videos uh, to sell the concept based on South Park-like figures from the cartoon series. And I'm going to send that to uh, you, to do, or at least the link, so that Helen uh, and her colleague can take a look. And there may be something in there about how we messaged that, that may be helpful. It was for a kind of uh, concept piece that never saw the light of day in British Columbia. So while government loved it at the time, they didn't release it. So I'll send you those two videos. Uh, uh, thanks very much, David. And as you point out, the parallels between BC Campus and what OER Foundation are trying to do are, 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 are you know, are, are very similar, right? Um, just, just to clarify, David, um, do, do you want us to keep those videos confidential or? No, no, no. Well, yeah, I guess from a government perspective, they they wouldn't want it because it has a government logo on it. So okay, gotcha. Um, we'll send it. To, <laughs> we'll send it to you, and please just use it for private study. But anyone on this conference can take a look at it and probably comment as well. Okay. Sure. With that, I actually have to go. So I wanted to just make that comment before I signed off. Cheers. Thanks very much, David. Appreciate your time. You're welcome. Take care. Okay, uh, moving on then. Uh,
let's I, I think it would be worth just having a quick look at you know some of the sound bites and uh, and or at least some of the barriers and uh, Helen you said you wanted to give a little bit of feedback on how you're thinking of of, of uh, ch tackling these challenges so let me open that up uh, and then you can take the floor Helen Okay, so what we had a run through, so basically what you're seeing on screen. Um, so I did the, the, the initial first draft of, you know, throwing some ideas in a framework together, which has been shared in on the wiki. Took a, a sweep through the sand bites and the barriers, the barriers in particular, because um, maybe, maybe looking at the barriers about first, because I think the, the most important thing is to make sure that we've addressed any barriers in the communications to hit that point of what's in it for me, why should I care, you know, thinking into what uh, uh, the senior uh, executives are going to be thinking into, and, and most importantly, why they, they wouldn't continue to watch further. And what very much came out to me was I think we need a scene that drills down more into what open is. Uh, again, that is something that could potentially pulled out as a separate standalone scene, because I'm not going to think too deeply into that level of um, dissecting it at this stage, but uh, that was one thing that very clearly came through. What I thought was interesting as well was the, the weighting of the, of the barriers. But um, based off the back of that, I added in, so to follow, I can share in just the, the, the very quick script update. But um, the bits that I realized were, we needed to highlight, you know, it's, it's about cost effectiveness of delivery, help raising international profile, accessing new students in hard to reach places and recouping costs. Those were the ones that came out very much, which I've, I've pulled into a sort of, you know, draft script format and added to uh, a couple of extra scenes to the new partners uh, animation. Because what I was very much thinking into is trying to put myself in their shoes. You know, what is this? Why should I join up? What's in it for my institution? Why should I care? Does it tick the boxes of what I'm trying to achieve in my job? Yep. So uh, that was very much what, and then and then you know to run on from that. So it's new opportunities. It's you know it's it's not actually it, it, it's reaching new people in new places rather than preventing you know existing students going through the existing systems. So I picked that apart, looked at barriers, turned them on their heads, and made the same statements but using positive language. So, you know the, the usual yep. kind of approach. Yeah. Um, so really, that was, the, that was the main thing that jumped out for me was, um, you know, really thinking into what would have been right, great desire to want to sign up. Quick assistance, just about the you know, the fact that you can be signing up pretty much as many students as you want to use the week without it incurring huge amounts of extra money costs. I think that's, that's one of the key things that's going to be in the mind. And then you have the... Networking opportunity being part of this wider network. Mm. I know the philanthropy is a driver, but I think it's it's definitely one of the slightly down down the list. People say that they care about philanthropy, but the reality is it's going to be profits. So yeah. It's going to be. yeah. Yeah. Can, um, can I just interrupt for a second? I apologize if um, if this has been discussed before, but I, Wayne previously was talking about the um, strength of our, of our of our effort being the network, um, in 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 part, and I I think that that could be the angle or the hook that could be used to also um, explain openness in yeah. this context, um, which is. So a hook would be that everyone, everyone who would be looking at this presentation probably will be familiar with Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll be familiar with, they'll, 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 they'll recognize or it will resonate with them the idea of the network effect and the idea that, that you, you, once you, the, the more people who belong to a network, the more valuable it is to belong to the network. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the, the idea here that we have already achieved critical mass as a network, or we can assert that we have, and I think it's we can justify that assertion. And the idea is almost that if you don't, we want we could imply that if you don't join the uh, the network uh, and get the opportunity to be one of the early um, adopters and the the prestige that comes with being one of the early adopters, um, we, we've got a we've got a network that's. 
that has the potential to explode in growth like Facebook has done but without all the negative aspects of Facebook because this is open, whereas Facebook is closed. You know, you could almost use it because a lot of people, I think, feel uncomfortable about things about Facebook. You could use that as a shorthand for um, the, you know, identifying that discomfort and saying that this has none of those, that, that our network has none of those um, constraints or walled garden aspects. And in fact, is exactly founded on exactly the opposite principles. Yeah. Yeah. David, uh, valid points and, uh, and total agreement there. I mean, I think they're important parallels. I just want to pick up on something Helen mentioned, um, you know, uh, or, or a bit of feedback in, in terms of Helen's suggestions. Uh, I, I do think we need a scene on open. Uh, it doesn't have to be academic in the sense that, you know, we're unpacking, you know, the intricate detail of what OER is or isn't, but we do need that message, you know, that this is about open and, and, and this is what it is in a very tangible way. Um, and uh, I think your point, uh, while the OERU is about saving cost, right, I, I think the message that we need to be communicating or which has great attraction with decision makers is that we're saving learners cost. Um, many of our partners from our own research, they're actually not interested in the cost saving in course development. Um, you know, they feel they've got an efficient model. I mean, even though they can save huge amounts of money with course development, it's not something that compels them to join. Um, so, I mean, I think couching the cost saving in the eyes, you're helping your learners. In other words, you're helping your clients is, 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 is a good sell. Um, but I also wouldn't underplay the philanthropic message. We don't have to sell it as philanthropy, but every publicly funded education institution does have a community service mission and very often our publicly funded education institutions you know struggle in terms of actually exercising you know the, the outreach and community service angle and so this is a, a I'll, 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 uh, it's a cheap way of actually getting into living up to your community standard <laughs> objectives um, you know you, you pay a small little membership fee and Certainly, we can get that message across, but in you know, kind of in a professional way. So I wouldn't underplay the sort of the charitable angle of what we're doing, uh, but you know, couching and focus it, focusing it on the learner, I think, is the way to go. Yeah, Jim, yeah, I'm not sure if you what your thoughts on that uh, topic are. Yeah, I agree with that. I think focusing on the learner will strike a chord with the president, you know, because they're really focused on getting more students, keeping students. And in relation to that, the effective transition to higher education is a key problem. I mean, we've talked about higher education running a revolving door. So the let students in, by the end of the first year, half of them are out the door again, a third of them. Now, changing that revolving door to an open door, like opening the door to higher education or whatever, with a focus on students, an effective transition for students without accumulating a debt, without wasting resources. And uh, the governments are in a similar bind in Australia with the higher education contribution scheme. They're generating more and more student debt that will never be repaid. So it starts coming back to the sustainable higher education and what's the future. And uh, I think there's a number of epigraphs around that are sort of looking at growing costs, you know, textbooks, fees, and growing debt, all of that provides a background to the, the point that Wayne is making. They can make savings in other ways, but really the sustainability of higher education will strike a chord. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree, Jim. I mean, I, I, think, I think one, maybe one of the, the themes or images or hook points is the, the whole sustainability thing. Uh, because OER is a sustainable and a renewable resource. And, you know, that's important for all our organizations. I was just scanning the barriers I'm, and I'm surprised none of us have actually mentioned this. And I, I think it's an important concept. And this relates to uh, Jim's, uh, you know, earlier communications around the OBRU being a parallel learning universe. Uh, it's an important message, uh, and I often pick this up when I'm chatting with the vice chancellors or folk 
thinking about joining is the misconception that OERU is trying to replace the traditional delivery model on campus, which we are not trying to do. We're trying to serve markets that aren't reached. We are trying to diversify uh, educational delivery to, to serve more people. It's not a replacement for, and yet there is this perception amongst many people coming into this thinking, oh, you know, the OERU is, you know, trying to replace me. Um, and we must be sure to communicate this whole sort of parallel learning universe, you know, widening access to more learners with the same resources, building reputation, you know, those kinds of things. Jim? Yeah, that was the original concept because um, I didn't think that we would ever achieve anything by attacking the mainstream. And that was why I came up with that heading, developing a parallel universe now. That as a marketing concept is probably too abstract, but the, the underlying idea is we're sort of adding value and adding a, a, a new business model operation, you know, that is going to help sustain higher education is the key thing. And one thing that we haven't mentioned so far is the open business model canvas. And somehow we need to connect the vice chancellor senior managers with that because that again is highlighting um, bigger picture scenarios about sustainability affordability and when i i look back at my own thinking i think the affordability of higher education is a key you know glue to what we're trying to do it's uh, affordable for students but it's also affordable for governments and it's um creating more sustainability for the existing system. So it's, again, these concepts are quite complex, but I think there is a, a sort of common message within that. Yeah, thanks. Jim. Just to pick up, Helen, I'm not sure if you have picked up on this yet. Uh, last year, we, we, uh, we had two regional meetings, uh, one in Oceania, one in North America where uh, and we're facilitated by Paul Stacy of Creative Commons International who's leading an international project on developing open business models and so the OERU has you know developed this open business model and part of the the market or the high level marketing plan let me just find that link again uh, is the presentation of this uh, open business model, because this is incredibly important for the senior decision makers, particularly vice chancellors and presidents, because there's this fear of cannibalization, you know, that the OER is going to cannibalize students, and we have to have an effective way, quickly explaining to vice, you know, actually, this is going to help your business. And here are a couple of ideas, uh, you know, that the partner network have thought about in terms of how you might do this. Um, and so part of the kind of the brandscaping brief, one of the components is the professional presentation of that OERU open business model. Now, how this is going to actually manifest itself in the marketing plan, I'm not sure. Perhaps it's, you know, a pre-seed version that's in the brochure with a more elaborate infographic or whatever of the business, business model or, you know, how we can maybe just at least plant the seed in the video that these, you know, we actually do have an open business model and, you know, those kinds of things. And Jason, I'm not sure in terms of how you work, whether you outsource um, sort of infographics or, 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 you know, the production of stuff. But Helen, you also do infographic work, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the two main halves of what we do are static infographics for print and online, and then the animated infographics and the video-based storytelling. So, uh, Jason, I'm not sure, maybe, you know, it's a, a conversation you need to have offline with Helen. Uh, you know, if you know, these ways we can sort of reuse the themes and imageries from the videos for the infographics for the open business model or whatever. Um, you know, it's maybe a conversation worth having. Yeah, comment. Sorry, Jason. Um, well, my audio is all wonky now. Um, I do have a graphic designer, but I'm more than happy to work with Mohawk. Eh? I mean, you, you're already immersed in it, and uh, you're going to be the best resource. So, nope, more than happy. Okay. Sure, sure. So again, we, whether we um, help actually put together a graphic as part of the video, or whether we provide elements to them put together again, you know, we play very nicely with other agencies. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. The, so, the other thing, Wayne, is just the the actual canvas. I think one of the benefits of the open business model is the canvas design, which would, as we know, makes a pretty good poster at some stage for more detail once people are engaged. Yeah. Uh, give them a, a lot of um, relationships, customer relationships, value proposition, you know, cost structures, all of that. If we can get them engaged, then that's when we get further down the pyramid. Yeah. Be it, you know, a nice um, way to integrate everything together for the senior managers. Yep. Absolutely. And just popping back to the point that you made for, at the beginning, Wayne, about posters, again, something we've done for other projects, um, and this is something that comes further down the line if, if it adds value, is actually turning, I, I think it might work for the students, is, is turning the scripts and some of the graphics from the video into comic strips. That can also work quite nicely. And, and they, they make great posters as accompanying parts. So again, that's something we can park from there and then pick up deeper yeah. into the project and see if that might work. Yeah, the, the, the graphic novel is a reviving genre um, and it's very popular against the youth, with the youth, so yeah, yeah. Well, we've got a piece, a piece from Internet New Zealand about uh, copyright and geoblocking we did last year, which I can share with you as an example of that. Yeah. Yeah, no, th th these are, are great ideas. And, and, and where possible, I mean, I'm keen, uh, I, I know that there are visual constraints when working with uh, SVG format, but it, it would be good as far as possible that we, we can use SVG, um, because it just gives us so much flexibility to do so much. Uh, but I realize the constraints of working, uh, you know, as, as, as an artist, you know, and a, a very capable fine artist, uh, SVG, can be constraining. So, yeah, yeah. The handy thing as well is that Dan, as well as um, doing uh, animation and illustration, he's got a print background, which I thought would be really useful on this. So, you know, again, we can just be having this as a sub layer running through that when we're identifying the elements, which ones of those can then be put into a remix package. Yeah. That sounds, sounds good to me. Um, Moving on, uh, moving on then with the agenda, uh, let's just have a look here. So we've got the concept ideas running on the video. We'll have a look at the stuff you're going to send us, Helen, as well as Dave, uh, David's uh, link. Um, and you'll give us clear instructions of what you expect us to do. And uh, we'll do the necessary. Uh, the last thing I just wanted to, I mean, I think we've already been covering this conversation of the liaison between the marketing plan and the work that Brandscaping is doing. And, and Helen, I mean, I mean, clearly, uh, you guys will be able to, you know, have that conversation together and figure out how this ties together. So that's all good. Uh, the last thing I just wanted to, again, just reference is all the different communication tools that we've got to take this project forward. Uh, we have a tradition at the OERF of working openly and transparently that everybody can see, um, you know, what we're doing. Uh, you would have seen the main marketing and communications plan. Uh, this is the landing page of the actual working group that uh, takes responsibility for these components within the overall implementation of the OERU strategic plan. And sitting within there is the video project and the marketing plan project. I mean, these KPIs are the KPIs in the strategic plan for the working group, right? Uh, and of which the video and the marketing plan is, you know, a subcomponent of that. And everything that we are doing um, in terms of the activities, getting feedback, uh, the, these pages are all linked from the main page. So that there's one place in the wiki that, you know, anything that relates to the marketing, uh, the marketing project or uh, the marketing and communications working group, they come here and uh, they'll find the links to the various activities. Uh, in addition to that, we have a couple of other extra tools, and I, I think most of you have signed up. One is we have a, a group email list, uh, which we post uh, on groups.oberu.org. It's an open source platform. I think most have joined this group. I'll just run a check again to make sure that everyone who's at this meeting has actually signed up for this group list. And this is what we use for email communication. And my request to the team is please don't send me email, personal emails uh, around this project because then all I've got to do, it creates extra work for me because then I've got to go and repeat it for the rest of the group. So you know, if there's a communication that you know goes out to the group, 
please use the group list uh, for posting those communications. Uh, the other communication tools that we do have, and, and this is very good for quick feedback. I know particularly when you're in a sort of a production mode and you quickly wanted to get some feedback, we do run a, a chat engine on chat.oeru.org. Uh, I don't think I've listed it here. Hey? I should actually just add it to the list. If you're not familiar with this, you can just go to uh, chat.oeru.org. Um, and you'll see what we've done on uh, chat.oeru.org is we've actually created a marketing uh, ch a channel, uh, OERU Marketing, so which we can then use, you know, just for, you know, uh, the up-to-date communications. I think the proprietary equivalent of this is Slack. Uh, I've never used it, but um, this is our open source uh, equivalent of that. And uh, Dave Lane and myself, we actually do a reasonably good job of monitoring this, uh, pretty, you know, 17 to 18 hours a day. Uh, we try. Um, but if you happen to be do burning a bit of midnight oil, uh, you might have to wait a few hours for a response. But I do encourage you to use this space uh, as well, you know, for the quick, snappy feedback. Um, Dave, was there anything you wanted to add about the chat.oeru or the forums? Uh, not sure, Dave's not coming in at the moment, but that's fine. Uh, the last sorry, sorry com computer problems there. I, I wasn't able to uh, unmute my mic. My uh, system is groaning under the weight of Zoom. Um, but um, no, there's, there's just the, the fact that people can uh, tune that conversation and refer back to the conversation on, on the chat um, so that, that they can see what's come before if, they're, if they want to catch up on any discussion that's gone on previously, I guess is quite useful to know. Yeah. So otherwise, yeah. 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 And yeah, thanks for that, Dave. And apologies to everyone uh, that you have to create separate accounts on each of these technologies. Part of our strategies early in this space is, you know, to see which technologies stick with the folk that are working and interacting, uh, you know, with OER, OERU tools. And until we've got consensus and, you know, strong uptake with, you know, the tools we're testing, we don't want to spend all the time and effort figuring out a single sign on for, you know, the different you know, for these tools. So, uh, so I do apologize for all the different accounts you've got to create for now, but you guys are, you know, te technologically literate and familiar with using these tools. So I'm, I'm sure that will be okay. So the last tool I just wanted to point out is we do use a, a we've got an open source Kanban board, very similar to Trello, uh, which we're using for a number of our developments. I've started populating a, a couple of things here, so I would strongly encourage our teams you know, for the, the, the various components uh, of this work just to add your cards to this Kanban board. I've got a very simple um, classification system I'm using here. Uh, you know, the purple being uh, a, a color code for the overall, uh, for the marketing component, that's sort of the brandscaping stuff, so anything that's brandscaping will be a purple code. The, the video production is red. Um, if it relates to both the video production and, and landscaping, it will have a green tag. Um, we can also signal uh, or add the yellow uh, color code to a card if it's urgent. And the advantage of doing that is we can actually filter by card. So, for example, what is urgent at the moment are you know, getting this Kanban op operational. So one of the things I'm going to do is I send out an email and encourage our team just to join this Kanban board so that we can actually use it for this development. It's actually working extremely well on our, our course development projects. Uh, you know, because you're familiar with Kanbans, you can shift cards around and, you know, you can comment on the individual cards. So it's actually a good way of, you know, just keeping the project up to date. Uh, and it you know, keep, gives a history yeah, of what's happened since you last logged in. So it's it's actually, you know, this in running in parallel with the wiki is uh, two very powerful tools, for, you know, for open and, and transparent and collaborative development. So just uh, pointing these out and a strong encouragement for the team to, to, to use these tools. Okay, so... Um, if there are no further questions, thoughts, or ideas, uh, 
we can adjourn this meeting. Um, but uh, let me just open the floor again. Are, are there any additional points you would like to add at this point in time? I, I don't have anything to add. I'd just like to thank everyone uh, for an interesting morning. And uh, I've also got a request if Dave can hang on for two minutes when the rest of you leave the meeting. It'll probably save us a bit of time. Thanks. Okay. So, Jim, what I'll do is I'll stop the recording um, and then you can continue the conversation with Dave. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. I'm very excited about this project. I mean, I know we've had a huge, huge shortcoming on sort of the marketing and communication side of our work. You know, we're, we're a poor charity. But so we really have to, you know, to have the caliber of your expertise helping us move forward. And again, with thanks to the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation. I will post a very precise version of the minutes. I won't go into the detail I normally go into with the OERU MC meetings um, because this is a tight group and um, we're all here. Uh, but I will post a, a copy of this video uh, on, on, on the wiki so that we've got a record of the meeting if you need to refer back to anything. So thanks, everyone. I really appreciate your time and contributions. See you later. Thank you. Bye, everybody.